Latelang we're raising babies 101. We dive into some important questions about who any sawana and colic. And then Ritwala Kafun demonstrating really both the biggest myths about what not to eat, how we meal. And the dynamic twin duo, Innocent and Millicent, share their experiences of being yummy mummies. When it comes to breastfeeding, everyone from your hairstylist, the Jomitsahao, to your boss has expert advice on what you should and shouldn't do. Some of it might be true and some, well, just suspect. I'm joined by Tando Mabuza, a dietitian, and Sister Dimakato, and of course, my lovely studio audience, Harikene Tabing. I'll start with you, uh, Tando. Haribuaka nutrition and breastfeeding. What is the importance Yahufa Yahu Anyisawan? Um, it's actually very, very important. Um, it's the best nutrition that a baby can get. Um, so what you find is that the body is actually um, well adapted, much more than what you'd find um, with your scientific types of formulas and so on. Mm -hmm. um, so with your body, you'll find that when it's hot, you're able to get um, a breast milk that has got more liquid. Um, and it varies actually. First, you'll have a breast milk that's very watery and as the ba baby continues to feed, then it becomes more solid and more filling. Um, and it fluctuates in protein content, fat content, water content, dependent on the specific baby's needs. So if I'm a, I'm a, a mother and I'm breastfeeding and there's another mother next to me, our breast milk content will not be the same, it'll be identical to what that specific baby actually needs. Now, I, I, I want to speak to you again, Tando, about nutrition. What exactly are the nutrients still the tolanka mocharacha breast milk that resa di toli anywhere else? Okay, so you get your um, immunoglobulins, um, which is your white blood cells also, um, that you wouldn't find in any um, type of formula or, or other. Um, then you'd also find healthy types of fats, like your omega-3 fats um, are part of the breast milk. Um, even your triglycerides are as, um, part of the breast milk. You get um, your milk proteins, casein and whey, um, and the fluid, obviously, then. The water content is also there, yes. I know who na leba sadi babang ba 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 sokolanga who ani sangwana. Some of us rebela luana. It's easy. You put the baby on the breast and the milk comes. But for me, me babang, it's really difficult. Mm. Uh, do you want to weigh in on that, sister? Yes. To to actually uh, be able to breastfeed the child. Remember that your breast needs stimulation, mm. and that stimulation it's from the baby sucking. So no matter how difficult it can be or how long it can take, you still need to put your baby on the breast and allow that stimulation to happen. So is there ever a case where men never can't? It's just dry out the next. No. Is there ever a case like that? No, it wouldn't. Um, but what you'd find is if a mother is stressed, um, those stress hormones do inhibit um, the production of milk. Mm -hmm. So it's very important that the mother is sitting in a calm area. Um, if she's still not too sure or still learning, mm -hmm. like make sure that she has a pillow or something, mm -hmm. just to make sure that she's well rested and comfortable. And another thing that's important about it is that it takes perseverance. So if you're a first time mother, um, don't expect everything to just happen very easily. It takes you as a mother to learn and also the baby is also learning. Mm -hmm. So it's it just takes you both um, learning in the process together mm. and yeah. don't give up. A lot of mothers give up very easy. Yeah. Um, in the first week, it'll just be like, oh, but it's, it's just too much. Let me rather just give the baby some formula, but just persevere, give it some time um, and you'll both be able to yes. feed yeah. very well. Can I give the flu to the child through my breast milk? Um, no, no, not through the breast milk, but obviously flu is actually um, transferred by being in close contact mm. with the person who has flu, um, being in a closed area, um, mm. and if the person is coughing and they um, like having the droplets that yes. contain the, the virus. And for moms who are HIV and, and breastfeeding, advice Simo? Um, the advice in that case would just be to make sure that they're, they're taking 
antiretroviral treatment. Um, and you'd want to have exclusive breastfeeding for the first six months. Mm. Then at six months, we'd want to stop breastfeeding mm. and start introducing um, um, the solids. Into so what the do you mean by exclusive breastfeeding? Exclusive breastfeeding means that it would be breast milk and nothing else. Mm -hmm. So it would be no tea, no water, no juice, no formula, just the breast milk only given to the baby because um, the baby's stomach, the lining is very sensitive. Mm -hmm. So if the baby is given anything else that can erode on the stomach lining mm -hmm. and then increase chances of the baby getting infected. Well, thank you very, very much, ladies. I really appreciate it. The myths have been busted and the truth is revealed. Next up, you decide. <laughs> Some mothers have been told not to eat any citrus fruits when they are pregnant because their babies will be born with jaundice. Audience, I have to ask you if you agree with this, thumbs up, and if you don't, thumbs down. Do you agree? All right. It seems the majority of you don't agree with this. That's the verdict from our audience, but let's find out what the people on the street had to say. How to shave. For my pregnancy, Nigija, everything. I was told, okay, there are certain foods that you don't eat. Okay, no, I didn't follow that either. I was just a rebel like that. I, I ate what I wanted to eat, but um, also in moderation. Cold drinks like is in this nama acid, jenga cold drink. You think no use like cold drink? Then a cold drink je ne choose and cold jo and then la and cold jo kela without his own. Because angas guti we goin zwa yin, but bebe ti sing as pozi ne coffee bebe chali ko right because li ne high caffeine. Because ni kine ban puta kor keska ja me rojo. Or the orange. It's getting pregnant. Being like my veggie, yeah. Tanda masiri, ama cereal gakut. When I was pregnant, they told me not to eat too much of proteins. But it's because we're not loving the chundis. Because now we're not eating the dilotzeo. We're not eating the chundis. We're not eating the chundis. When it comes to chundis, um, yes, I was told about the not mangoes but oranges as such. Um, and I'm not an orange lover, but um. Yes, but like the, you know, even with a coffee one, my mother used to say that, okay, this is what, what can happen. Um, but I stayed away from oranges and I don't eat spinach. Um, cabbage I ate a lot. Um, yes, and then I had my first born was, well, I um, had jaundice. And she had to like sleep on the, under the lights for about three days in hospital. So, so yeah, up to this day, I never really, really read about it. Very, very interesting. We are now talking about prenatal nutrition. And uh, I have to ask you, ladies, what do you think about that? Specifically, gajondas. It seems that's a big one. But the orange and all those citrus things can cause it. As a midwife, jaundice is common in every child, especially in the first three days of life. Because remember, the child is no longer dependent on the blood cells, but it's starting to produce their own blood cell. Mm. So the cutting off on, of those blood cells, mm. they produce that greenish substance. Uh -huh. That greenish substance, high flow milling in excess. It, it, it brings that jaundice, that yellowish discoloration of the skin. Mm. So I don't know how okay. does it relate, Lady Orange, really. <laughs> so I'll bring you in as a dietitian, Tando. Um, I totally agree. So, so it's a no, it doesn't. Said. It is a no. Um, increased bilirubin production is what actually causes jaundice. So vitamin C is very beneficial. You'd actually want to have vitamin C rich foods in the diet because that aids with the immune system. And we all know that in pregnancy, pregnancy in itself does decrease your immune um, system. Mm -hmm. So you'd want to actually have vitamin C rich foods. Um, with the one, one of the ladies that were speaking there who had said that um, they were specifically told not to eat oranges and mangoes. Yes. Um, there's a condition called gestational diabetes. Mm -hmm. And in diabetes, that's where we'd actually want to avoid high sugary food. So it's not because of the vitamin C content, uh -huh. but it's because of the sugar content that you'd find. Now, sister, with regards to um, teenage mothers, what should they not and shouldn't be eating? Um, I think too much of everything. 
Mm. It's where the problem lies. Mm. But they can have their regular meals that they usually have as long as it's nutritious and it's within a well-balanced diet. Mm. I don't think really you should be... Eating for two. Yes, eating for two or saying I'm staying away from certain foods because each and every food plays a, an important role in our system. Mm. But however, what I would like them to avoid, it's those those habits that comes with pregnancy. To like, think. for instance, some of them would eat ice. Some of them, but so the cravings the and cravings stuff like that. The cravings, there are even non-food substances. That they, Those yeah. are the ones that I can... And dangerous. Mm. Yeah. I'm going to ask you, here, uh, Tando, staying with a nutrition, what would mm. you say as well for teenage mothers? Make sure that your food is balanced um, and then you just use supplements um, as extra. Thank you very much, ladies, for helping us understand more about prenatal nutrition. And we've also learned that citrus fruit do not cause jaundice. So enjoy your fruits. Let your baby enjoy those fruits. Thank you again, ladies. Thank you for having us. So it's all up to you. You must decide. Kinakwadi papato haribowa more on nutrition and its impact on your child's development. Next on Raising Babies 101, easy peasy recipes when introducing baby to solids. And infant obesity and the long-term effects it has on children. <laughs> Kale amogela gape mo raising babies 101. Mashed potatoes, mukopu, limotoho are foods the majority of us would first think of when preparing baby soft food if we do not want to buy pre-packaged food. How easy is it to prepare a variety of soft foods when introducing baby to solids? It's easy peasy. <laughs> Joining me is Nicole Edwards, a pediatric dietitian who's going to give us some solutions. Hi, Nicole. Hi, Carol. Hi. Lots of colorful, beautiful food on the table for baby. Please walk us through all of this deliciousness. Okay. I think when it comes to weaning foods for babies, what we need to look at is what we have at home already and what the family is eating as, uh, as a whole. And secondly, I think what is important is just making sure when you transferring to the solids um, that you make sure you've got very hygienic conditions, um, your, all your utensils are, are spotlessly clean, mm -hmm. they've been washed well, and that stands you in, in good stead for preparation of the food because a lot of the food that you can prepare for a baby, you can do in bulk mm -hmm. and uh, freeze, as, we've, we, as we can see, and I'll talk about that in, in a second. We can freeze, put the food away, and it can be taken out of the freezer if and, and when it's needed. Okay. So yes. the idea is convenience, yes. I love it. Let's talk through all the foods that you have here. Um, I know most of us, like I mentioned earlier, we tend to opt for things like pap or cream of maize. What are the other options to that? Okay, so there are obviously your commercial single grain um, cereals which are available. You've got millet, you've got ba baby rice, uh, you've got oats, baby baby oats cereal, and that's that's absolutely fine. And pup is is absolutely fine as well as long as it's loosened with and some watery. expressed uh, breast milk mm -hmm. or formula milk if, mm -hmm. if you're giving that to the baby when they are very, very young. Um, but you do have a range of other uh, foods as well, and it really depends on where the child is, mm -hmm. where the baby is in their weaning uh, process, because it is a process. They mm -hmm. start off with very basic like uh, what? foods. What is basic? So, so basic would be your your baby rice, um, your your baby millet, and you would mix that with some express breast, breast milk or, or formula. And um, a lot of parents actually opt to rather choose a, a vegetable to start mm -hmm. weaning. So that would be your uh, broccoli or your baby marrow or a, a sweet potato as well as a good starter weaning f uh, food. An avocado? Um, avocado is absolutely fine, but possibly a little bit further further along. Mm -hmm. Once the baby's over five months, five and a half months, you really can open up the range and try and select foods from, from each group. So you would then bring in your fruits. You can do a strained pureed fruits mm -hmm. and any one of these would be absolutely fine. And the beans? So the beans come a little bit later. This is our, our protein area, mm -hmm. and protein is introduced after the baby has turned six months old. That's okay. where it's important for us to start bringing in our protein sources. So here I see there's liver, but it has to be cooked and mashed. So Absolutely. We just have so liver is a very you. good source of, of protein. Uh, it has got iron, It's it's got vitamin A, um, it's 
easily accessible. And it's, it's really not that available. expensive. It's mm. not that ex- expensive. Also, your beans, your tin beans are absolutely fine as well. Obviously, they would be mashed mashed up. Uh, of course, you can use your sauces such as your your uh, lamb, your your chicken, your mm-hmm. fish as mm-hmm. well. But these are your your more accessible, uh, cheaper uh, protein yes. sources. Obviously, we'd be cautious when we were introducing those foods to the, the the baby's diet. But the new research is telling us that we we don't hold back on those allergenic foods mm-hmm. at all. Um, so from from six months, we we go full steam ahead with uh, we introduce wheat before seven months, um, eggs around seven months, um, even dairy. We 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 introduce that. Quite early on. Okay, so now I've matched my okay. peach, and you know I'm a busy mom. Yes, I don't have time to make this mashy thing every day. Absolutely. How do I store this so that so my nanny can help me okay. pop it out and feed it to the baby? Perfect. Boy? Okay, so doing your foods, making your weaning foods in bulk, is a very good idea because we want it to be convenient. So obviously, you make sure that your um, these are just simple ice cube trays. So you'd make sure this is spotlessly clean. Um, you would steam your steam your vegetables if it was vegetables, and um, you would mash those down or mm-hmm. puree that down. And then, as you can see, what I've done here is you would just spoon them into the trays okay. and then put that straight into the into the freezer, covered yeah, with this. perhaps some cling film. Um, but that would go into the freezer. Mm-hmm. And then what, what makes life a lot easier is to then pop them out, um, put them into some Ziploc bags, label the bag, mm-hmm. date the bag, and put that straight into the freezer. So with regards to children with colic, mm-hmm. I know sometimes it's got to do with the fact that the child is not eating on time. How do you tell if a child has eaten enough and um, how do you make sure that they get the right nutrients down? Okay, so colic is quite a difficult condition to um, a- approach with with food. Um, it doesn't necessarily tie in with the solids that they are having. In fact, usually the children uh, resolve their colic by the time they are six six months old. Mm-hmm. So colic and food is is a bit difficult. They might they might be a bit gassier when you're introducing the food, um, uh, introducing the solids. But then what you would do is just pull back a little bit, perhaps try another weaning food, give a few more days between each in the introduction of, of each food and do single introduction. Okay, so now that see. you have them in these little containers, do we then say that this is one meal, so breakfast, lunch, dinner type thing? Okay. Is this portion control as well? It can be. Um, it You can give guidelines. If you are not home and somebody else is feeding the baby, you can say, please give a block of broccoli and um, a block of the chicken that I've that I've done, and then a little bit of um, yogurt and pureed fruit in addition to that. So it does help with portion control, definitely when you're advising somebody else. But your baby will will give you the cues okay. um, and will let you know when they've had, had enough. enough. What are your final thoughts on this nutrition? I think people should realize how easy it is to do at home, especially using foods which are easily accessible. Uh, foods that are nutritious and and, and just, it doesn't have to take a lot of money it doesn't have to take a lot of money and it can be done in bulk uh, so that you're not quickly mixing up foods before each meal yeah. I think and yeah that's the, the message I love it thank you so okay. much Nicole you're welcome. You're welcome. so libone hegohai papa ilukile mar try other things as well kunali di fruitsi di beansi and also wonderful vegetables still kafang wanahao right now though it's competition time <laughs> Okay, viewers, as we all know, parenting can be very, very costly. To make life a little easier for you, our baby shower segment is to shower you with gifts. This week, we have a hamper with 1,000 Rand to give away. All you need to do is answer yes or no to one simple question correctly. When preparing soft food for baby, can you use a fork in the absence of a blender? To enter this competition, answer yes or no on our social media platforms. Answer correctly and one lucky viewer will be randomly selected to win this baby hamper, valued at over 2,500 Rand. The winner will be announced on our social media. Good luck! (laughs) After the break, we unpack how childhood obesity has long-term effects leading into adulthood.
Welcome back to Raising Babies 101. Billy Musa Analejara, he was put on a diet with the help of a dietitian. Because of his weight, Musa only started learning to walk after the age of one. Mkhonuwakhaghe Maselwani says that she notices that he might be regaining the weight he lost as a baby. Her big question is, how does she help her grandchild control his weight? Harishep. Kina Maselwani ke ngkholo wa mosa me wa mosa ke facebook ya ka le ena mosa ke setlolo sa ka sa pele o la bana le gore mosa o tlame a sale le nna me wa hai a khutlele msebetsing after 3 months and then mosa after 3 months ha richa 6 months mosa ka qala a qala ke ina weight after 6 months a ke re o ya tseba dijo tsa bana dingwetsi after six months, I was a little bit of 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 a ba ke ke le ke o modaitisa ke botsa ke daitise ngwana jwang kwa skele se ya nka se gone o modaitisa e ofi ase ke ngwana o tla lebese ka mo fa eng ha ke am 17 ke tla mele ke lo mo ke mo batlela crash di crash di mohana because because of weight ya high and ana le ntwela kwa re o bana le short brief ya go la hana ana le 2 years o la ka admit go pano because of short brief after I took up on Doctor, I was refilled, 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 I was ene ke sokola hore na ke tla mosia le mang because of weight ya hai tswa le ke a mbona hape wa ke ina hape tswa le ke kopa le nthuse raising baby so na ke mo fe e I'm joined now in studio by Tando Mabuza, who is a dietitian and pediatric dietitian, Nicole Edwards. So, um, ladies, as you heard, Maselwane is in a predicament where she's worried that little Musa, he's six years old now, he looks perfectly fine to us now, but she's worried that his habits might take him back to childhood obesity again. Um, your views, Nicole? I think what is most important to assess is, is actually looking at that chart um, what we can see is that he has dropped off the chart and now he is going back, back up to where he was before. However, we need to look at that in relation to his current height mm. and also his birth weight and to see where he ideally should be tracking. Because even if he went up a little bit, it might mean that he still stays within the acceptable range for where he needs to be according to his height and also looking at his parents' height. So I think seeing that drop off, we never really like seeing a child lose weight. We rather like seeing them grow into themselves. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that the most important thing would be to really go back and look at the history, uh, what's going on at the moment with him, where he where he's at, and and really take a good look at the family, where he's at school, all of those things have, have an impact on what could have changed. Mm. So I'm going to bring you in here, uh, Tando, just to find out from you, what advice would you give Ms. in her in her situation? Um, well, I'd really advise her um, to make sure that she's giving the child um, nice balanced meals. Um, um, just as how Nicole had spoken, that you don't want any fast foods, not so much of the high sugary types of foods, um, especially not like as a replacement of a breakfast yake or any other um, main meal that the child would be eating. Mm -hmm. So you'd, you'd want to make sure that the child is getting sufficient amounts of calcium, um, that he's drinking at least two cups of milk per day. Um, and then you'd also want to make sure that there's the protein, the vegetables, mm -hmm. and the whole grain types of starch that you'd be having as part of the mm -hmm. diet. So what are, what are the disadvantages that Musa could face should he become obese again? 
um, mm. as his grandmother is worried. What are the disadvantages of that happening, Nicole? So obesity in childhood definitely puts the child at risk for uh, conditions later on in life. One would be type 2 diabetes, mm -hmm. hypertension, uh, strain on, on joints and amenability to to be active, uh, pain in the joints. Mm -hmm. And then psychologically as well, it really impacts on, on children to be obese. They find it difficult to enjoy sports. They find it difficult to join in with their, pair, with their peers. Uh, it really has its limitations and, and obviously the, the health uh, implications are enormous as well. Mm. Now, Tando, uh, culturally, Wana Ononeng is seen as Wana who's healthy and looked after. Mm. Wana is just oh. perfect weight. Mm. It's like, just yeah. a little bit more. <laughs> mm. What do you say about that from a cultural perspective for what? Um, well, I know that it's like that fairly culturally. fresh and all of that. But um, nutritionally, it isn't very good for the baby because, as you would be aware, that um, obesity in childhood tends to follow through until adulthood. Mm. So you'd actually want to prevent it from that age and be cautious about certain things because I think culturally it also has to do with my practices at TZA too because umtana, well, they're just like two months. Um, or Gogo will start being like, no, no, this baby is hungry. Start giving them porridge and mm -hmm. and so on. And those type of practices um, tend to um, contribute more to to the child actually gaining more weight than they should. Mm -hmm. Younger. Nicole, what mm -hmm. healthy habits would you say Mesulwani should pick up? Okay, I, I think most importantly we need to look at are there any convenience foods uh, that are being used? So those are your highly saturated fat foods, your, high, your foods high in, in sugars, uh, and foods that um, are going to have high calorie density, but they are not necessarily very filling. And often um, children fall into the trap of having fizzy, carbonated, uh, sweet drinks. That's mm -hmm. also a huge problem. Um, the requirement or the recommendation for sugar mm -hmm. for this particular age is only around 18 to 20 grams of sugar per day, mm -hmm. whereas a can of 340 ml can of fizzy drink a lot. is about 34 grams of sugar. sugar. So, you know, and you can down a, a can of drink very quickly. Yeah. So I think we, we need, we'd need to focus on, on are there any of those practices yes. being used? And apart from that, portion control mm. is possibly a, an issue. Bringing in more fruits, more vegetables, as opposed to a whole plate of starchy, starchy, um, starchy uh, foods. foods. Um, focusing on, on protein as well. As well. Okay. Making sure that protein... Um, carries the blood sugars. All yeah. right. Yeah. We have a question from our studio audience. Ndate, no matlo bota bota. My niece, she likes watching those TV, those uh, reality TV shows. So sometimes they would show people with obesity, and then now she thinks that if she eats too much, she'll end up like those guys. So what can there be any advice on that regard? What we try to do with with children and nutrition is we, we focus on the family because um, the, the child is getting the, the eating habits from the family. So mm -hmm. when I counsel a, a family or meet with a family, it's very much a, a family uh, consultation because the child doesn't eat in isolation. So I would very much look at the parents. I would look at their height their build and and we'd work as a family um, to change the eating habits of the entire family yeah. not just of that child so that's important Tando for his niece the advice um, well what I'd really advise is that they they encourage her to eat healthily um, exercise even um, as how Nicole was speaking about um, dietary wise exercise would be something that you'd want to incorporate as family practice that everyone does it together um, and they they just allow her because in, in most cases children even if she might be a bit chubby she'd probably grow with it um, and and um, as she gets her height she'd shed off the, that weight during her growth spurt um, but you wouldn't want to actually encourage an eating disorder because what I'm actually concerned about is that mm -hmm. if she is that um, afraid that she might actually restrict her her foods too much and an eating disorder might might develop as a result of it so just um, Advise her in terms of healthy types of balanced meals, as how we've spoken about your meals should be balanced, and um, like support her in terms of exercising mm. together with her, but don't um, encourage her to 
limit too much foods and do unhealthy practices because that could actually exacerbate, especially as she grows. Is childhood obesity on the rise in South Africa? Yes. It is. It's a, it is a, a, an enormous problem which we need to face. Um, there are various thoughts behind, you know, what could be, could be contributing to the, the rise of obesity in our children. Urbanization is one of them. Uh, the view that convenience foods are, are wealthy foods or they are foods that are, are better for you. Mm. Um, and we were talking about this earlier, uh, going back to almost your, the practices that you had growing up yourself or your granny had growing up, you know, eating food from, from right outside your house or, you know, food that's locally prepared or locally bought, food that's made from scratch mm. will go a long way in, in, in preventing obesity. I mm. think there's a huge rise with urbanization, which is mm. a problem for us. Your final thought, Tando? Um, it, with regards to children and obesity, mm. um, what I'd really say is that um, we, <clears throat> we really just need to be supportive um, to the children, make sure that we are an example, especially mm. when it comes to um, nutritional practices in the house, um, make sure that you providing the types of meals that you'd want your child to, to actually eat um, and do not give any type of your high calorie types of foods. Um, incorporate a lot of exercise as part of your, your lifestyle. Your yeah. lifestyle. Well, mm -hmm. thank you very much, uh, ladies, for joining me and discussing this topic of nutrition and childhood obesity. So, Mercy Luane, I hope we have helped you. For more information on nutrition and the benefits and side effects it can have on your child, continue the conversation with us on all social media platforms by searching Raising Babies 101. More to come after this. Cecilia Delang, colic and the reasons why your baby cries non-stop at night. Welcome back to Raising Babies 101. Our letter for baby's health A to Z is C for colic. <laughs> colic is the name for excessive frequent crying in a baby who appears to be otherwise healthy. It's a common problem that affects up to one in five babies. Colic tends to begin when a baby is a few weeks old. It normally stops by four months of age or by six months at the latest. I am joined by Sister Dimakato to help us understand colic better. Welcome, Sister. Yano Sister Dimakato, ke bakla hubua ka colic is specifically to do with the symptoms tayone. What are they? Okay, hara she bilenga na colic ne. On otsoren ke colic, we are looking at a baby from two weeks mm. to uh, two months. Mm -hmm. This baby, like there are different types of colic, but specifically for this baby, what two weeks to two months, ke stomach colic. Okay. What happens with stomach colic? It's that the baby akere so saka la hoja and having their feeds. Mm. They react to certain feeds, oh. or they do not tolerate those feeds. Uh -huh. Sometimes it's because bom me high. They don't feed their babies on time. Causing ba na ba ko reba jeminoana. And then feature yabi wan eri bonang. It's the persistent crying. This baby will cry the whole day for three hours. Mm -hmm. That thing will persist for three days and even last up to three weeks. Mm -hmm. And then after that um, crying, mm -hmm. this baby will have a distended abdomen. Kur like abdomen ya hai itlo ruruha. Mainly because of moya o otletin kaha. So mala aruruha. Okay. Yes. Yeah, and that thing can cause an irritation due to that crying heart. So, okay, so keep, keep, keep like indigestion for Mutom Hood. Yes, for okay. Anumunyan. I see. And then Mautua Hai Atlulashi will look at him because of Akiri. You can imagine King Anumunyan. Eh. When the abdomen is distended, that whole weight, you look at those tiny feet oh, towards the abdomen. Mm. And then because voila, the skin will be fluffy. And then lima tsoho atlo dula atileche. That's how motatli sangwan arotsuriki kolik. I would look at those and then from the spot I will know what this is kolik. Kulele poto in our audience. Me ono batlo kubota poto about kolik. Hi sister, can you prevent the kolik? Yes, kolik ya preventera. And then your ways of preventing colic really depends on the mother and the feeding method of the mother. We know a a young baby has to be fed eight times a day, meaning in your day, you would divide that uh, uh, 24 hours 
into eight, and then you would know Jorge, every three hours I have to feed this baby. And even after feeding, you should always uh, put the baby here so that the baby can release that excessive air. Mm -hmm. Because you know sometimes when you bottle feed, the baby also swallows the air. Mm -hmm. When you put the baby on the breast, the baby sometimes struggles to find their, nettle, their nipple. And on that process, they swallow that excessive air. So every time when you breastfeed or bottle feed your baby, make sure that you put them on your chest to uh, get rid of that excessive air. So how do you treat it? I know for now, uh, I, I read up for a on the bed and then and you make like basically so to get gases out of the stomach. So I would do that for one. It looked like it helped, but sometimes with what would you say are some of the treatments or the ways of dealing with it? The treatment, it's mainly for a toilet away to get that excessive air out of the baby's tummy. So usually, I would advise mothers to be able vertically, but they or pet on the back until they are up and down. I have a lot of advice for some nice advice for some of my colleagues and my colleagues. Some great experience and advice for us. Okay, Bomme, what I'd like to play, Rahulu, it's feed your baby on demand. From now on, we know that the baby has to eat eight hours a day. Don't wait for the baby to cry because that crying already predisposes them to something else. Make sure, Rahulu, the mixing of the bottle, mama, use it accordingly. Sometimes Bomme, they budget, and then instead of putting uh, five teaspoons, they put two just to dye the milk, mm -hmm. and then they think it's milk. That thing also predisposes the children, Rahulu, Hi, yes, sister Di Makato. We like to tell you that I actually have open eyes. Katawa, your colleague. I didn't realize the importance. Young one, I check and now go. Li how unaha norungwa na hatwara get ala ofangwa na. If wana bata utaja, and that's very important. Kale bohame. Thank you so much for having me. Well, there you have it. See for colleague. Know how to spot it and know how it can be treated. More to come after this. Coming up after the break, celebrities and their babies. <laughs> they say you save the best for last and we have a double treat for you. Our yummy mummies today are Skim Sum actress and a presenter twin sister, Innocent Sadiki and Millicent Mashile. Welcome to you both, ladies and the family. Thank, Thank you so much for having us. us. <laughs> It's so interesting you responded as twins literally at the same time. <laughs> we have those moments yeah. sometimes. I love lot them because they validate the fact that we're still twins. twins. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. So, can you introduce us? Who's who? Who's baby? What are their names? Okay. The lady. Okay. I'm Emma. Okay. Sadiki. She's my daughter. Her other name is Emma. Um, Sadiki, and she's five years old, turning six very soon, in two months. Awesome. Yes, um, Nike Lily, the boys, and Kinalima twins, Kikarolo, Mashile, and Kamarelo, Mashile. Wave, boys. Hi, <laughs> hi. Hi, hi. Busy hi guys. <laughs> <laughs> so cute. Is there ever a time where uh, your twin boys, they confuse Mamale Auntie? Ooh, uh, never. No, never. We try to confuse them many times. Actually, there was, a, there was a time where we dressed exactly identical yeah. and we did our hair the same, we dressed the same and we were like, we're going to confuse the kids. All three of them had gone with one of their daddies. And then, <laughs> then when they walked out of the car, she ran to her mommy. So that was beautiful. And I know you guys are twins and you are sisters as well. Has it changed you as twins, as well as motherhood? Has it changed you as individuals? Yeah, definitely. I think when you become a mother, you cannot remain um, you know, the same, you know, your, your lifestyle changes, your lifestyle changes, your lifestyle responsibilities, they become more than what they were before. And I think another thing is because we co-parent our kids. And for you, motherhood, you'll change as young as a sister with, with, with a twin. Yeah, it changes a good, whatever. I think, 
Banchiche, the best, the best of me, the mm. best of Jeez. Millicent, you know. Um, I can never know the Bupilo Niki Bupila getting to the fullest until Gibela Rabanaba because then I realized what true love is. I was, mm. you know, introduced to unconditional love. Yes. And there was just so much responsibility on my shoulders. And now I cannot disappoint because there's this little people who are looking at you and they're like, you cannot disappoint. So I think we pressure here, but keep positive pressure. I love it. And I love it. And I love it. I must just reach them. Because if I don't, then I fail them. True. And I can't tell them to follow their dreams if I haven't reached mine. So I want to find out from you as um, sisters, no? yeah. um, especially when it comes to the other twins in the family. Yes. Have you imparted you know, advice for them as twins um, as they're growing up? I think more than which advice, it's showing them how close we are. Um, whenever like, when I'm sad, my daughter told me, Mommy, because Mama Mini is going to make you laugh, oh, you know, so yeah. they already know that. So we, we are a living example to our kids. We're not just twins because name, we're not just sisters because of a name. Yeah. So they know it. And when they come to my house, they'll be telling me about their mom this, their mom that. They know the love that we have for each other. When I'm alone, my daughter always asks me, oh, so you actually going to go to the mall without your sister? Um, yeah, I have a life without my sister. <laughs> you know, so we, I think we show them what love is. You yeah. know, we demonstrate it by the way we treat each other, the way we respect each other, the time that we spend with each other. And so, I want to say, okay, we are going to be a sister or a sister. So, so in this episode, Rila Rabuwa got breastfeeding and Dijo Tensi, the food you must take care of yeah. um, when you are breastfeeding yeah. as well as the food you should be eating. What are your thoughts, Kayo, on breastfeeding? Yo, I really, Top really first, enjoy it. I have my experience. <laughs> <laughs> my answer will be different. <laughs> I enjoyed breastfeeding. Unfortunately, I was breastfeeding when my daughter was a month. So kapala ku breastfeed, but I remember my mother-in-law, she always said, Uru mwananga, come mamis, come mamis and one. And I used to enjoy it so much because, like, nichi mamis and one angachi, nivani kumu said, zamatoni, and it's such the most wonderful and beautiful experience. So I really wish that I had more time ku breastfeed and one. I think I was going to be one of those mamba ku breastfeed and one for three years, you know, if I had the opportunity, but it was just a month and I miss it. Kind of like, I've got my mom's kid, don't you want to come and tell some look at you like, ew. Absolutely not. Yeah, you know. But, but it's a beautiful moment that I really enjoyed, even though it lasted for only one month because I had to go back to work, to work. and get back yeah. to shape. And, yeah. really and so yeah. you say it's experience how in the uh, My experience was just something else. Like, oh, you can never be prepared for that. Breastfeeding two babies. But <laughs> Eh, banya koja, banya ko. Ooh, that was hectic. I had to kishumisha matoka, kishumisha mauto, kishumisha everything. Cause kuhopala there was a time beki breastfeeder only one with my left hand, and umuwe baru beti so atora tomola. So ngasi tuleli so I had to kimu kuke kaluto. I was, yeah, I realized things about myself. What advice would you give Batwadi Bashebile Nkone Anong on parenting and your journey as sisters who would serve Yo, mm. I want to be the first to teach my kids love. I want to be the first to tell my kids, okay, this is danger, this is not danger. This is where you should go, this is where you shouldn't go. I want to be the first to say, if Nike Dira Di Ruta Katori, uh, you get married as a virgin because the world will tell them you are legal to have sex at 18. Yeah. You know, so Nike Batroa, that parent who says, These are my rules, even when you go out there, whatever, okay. So, yeah. Wow. And for me, I don't know what to do. I don't know I I think any household needs to have something that they believe in. Can ne, um, you know, prayer is the most important thing. I teach my daughter before. Actually, like Karabere Mwananga, actually, there are Karabere. Be grateful. Know that there's a higher authority yeah. that's above you. You know, this is the most important thing. So for me, it's having those small foundations and those small 
cultural traits that you introduce to the family and and also just you know love as well I mean yeah. you know mentioned love I think Lufuno it's it's something that's so amazing it's something that can only be felt and not taught well thank you so much ladies for coming in and sharing your family with us and also some great tips on parenting we appreciate it thanks, thanks for having, having us. us well you've heard it from the beautiful ladies how they do this parenting thing remember to keep in touch from Wena on social media go to Twitter Facebook Instagram YouTube search for Raising Babies 101. Well, Nako Ishabile, time for me to get out of here, but we'll see you again next week. Let's remember, Harto Komele Banabarona. Kare Banabarona, Kimo Kamoso Barona. For me, Carol Afori. Bye bye. Welcome to Pep Talk, the parent's guide for all things to do with raising your kids. Nutrition is paramount to keeping your kids healthy. A solid diet will promote a healthy immune system and growth. So, today we'll be offering advice on the do's and absolute don'ts when it comes to keeping your child healthy and full. Doctors recommend solids and formula to only be added to baby's diet from six months, though moms can breastfeed for as long as they want. For feeding bottles, you can go for these BPA-free bottle sets that come with 250ml and 125ml bottles, as well as bottle and teat brushes. When traveling with your baby, you can get one of these nifty bottle warmers to keep your baby's milk warm throughout the day. Never heat your baby's bottle in the microwave as this may introduce dangerous toxins into your baby's milk. Instead, use a bowl of warm water. Now for your toddlers. As we all know, they are the fussiest and messiest eaters in the world. Always remember that kids love routine. So make sure that feeding times are consistent and that there are no distractions like TV. When it's time to eat, it's time to eat. Start your toddlers off with plastic cutlery and crockery like these and designate a special eating area for them. Catch us again next time and remember to connect with us on our social media pages to get winning with Pip. See you next time right here on Pip Talk. <laughs>